Hi guys and welcome. Uh, today we're having a look at the previous video, the review of the CAT1 scanner. I promised there that I would take the wall section, this one here that I scanned, and insert that into Fusion 360. And we're going to show you how you can do some uh, reverse engineering, take out some data quite easily from a mesh. So I basically took the mesh straight in and uh, yeah, it's unreduced, it's, it, it's not treated at all and we're just gonna take it from there. So let's go into the CAD software and check it out. So I just loaded in the uh, mesh file here. This is the wall section. You can see here in bodies, this is only a mesh body. Uh, nothing has been done just yet. I tried to move it around, align it a little bit better with the, uh, with the different views here. And already we can see if I, if I use one wall as parallel, the other wall isn't parallel. So that's a little bit interesting. Okay, I usually work in here in from the patch environment. So I recommend doing that if you want to follow along. So the first thing that we need to do is to create some offsets plane. And these ones help us um, putting out where we want to have uh, our intersecting data. So we're going to have one plane uh, intersecting at this, this part, this wall section here, and another one in this section here. Uh, somewhere around that should be good. Now, as you can see, I do have a little bit of an issue here. I scaled the model 10x. So um, th this is not 550 millimeters, it's 55 millimeters. But in this case, it, that doesn't matter at all. I'm just going to continue modeling. We want to create a new sketch. And I think I'm going to start off with the first one. So I can just click on that plane in the side. Now, when we enter the sketch mode, we have the sketch button here, the sketch palette. We can go down to the sketch tools, use uh, mesh create mesh selection. So uh, that allows us to select the mesh and then select a plane, the, the same plane that we took the sketch from and we'll create this, um, and this line through everything. Now, if we just stop there and we'll hide the mesh body, we'll hide, the, um, yeah, there we go, in this sketch. We actually didn't need to make the first sketch. We just need to start a sketch from this tool here, from the mesh tool. Sorry about that. So if we enter this sketch here, where we have this line. We can go back into sketch menu, into mesh. We also have this tool here, fit curves to mesh selection. Now we have a lot of interesting types here. We can start with the first point wherever we want to start it. You can see there's a small icon as soon as I uh, get close to the, to the mesh line. So we have a few different tools to work with. Usually I go with lines and curves or arcs. Uh, but you can also use splines here. So the idea is that we'll follow along and we'll recreate this curve with a sketched curve. It's quite easily here to get focused on details way too much. So I'm gonna try to step it down a little bit. Now, if we think about what, what we actually intersected here, I don't need the walls. Um, we can use them later if you want to, but what I want is this profile. If, if I would, for example, create this or uh, I scan different linings in, in, uh, in buildings and wanna recreate them. So I'm going to start with a rectangle down here just to get started. So I'm clicking at one side and you can see how if we zoom in, it's, it's creating a line around these ones here. And I will remove these parts later, but I just want to start somewhere. Now I'm going to change to arc and I'm going to start basically continue clicking here. Um, building arcs, something like that, maybe a flat section and I think arcs again. Of course, you can try to maintain a little bit on the detail level here. So now uh, another flat part, continue with arcing here. This is a big arc, so I can probably take it in one. You can see that we're, we're way, way detail here. We're very, very close to the, to the final part. So I'm going to continue with arc here. You can see here, if I try to continue, it will kind of try to uh, behave the arc, uh, but this is obviously too far. Um, so we need to add some details before that. Going in with the arcs, arcs are great. And then we finish off and I'm actually going to finish off by going uh, a little bit further here because we have a, a deviation here in the scan. So I'm going to continue basically straight down because I know it's, it's almost straight down. And then just for fun, we can continue this line a little bit as well. But if you cl click OK now, we actually have a sketch to work from. We can also hide this mesh selection and you can see the, the file that we started off with. I'm still in a sketch mode, so I can finish off this shape if I want to, for example, um, create some sort of uh, base model here, just making things parallel. 
There we go. That should be fine. Close it off. So now we have a profile that we can, for example, extrude if we want to. Uh, and since I'm working in patch environment, I don't want to uh, close everything off just yet. I just want to show you guys that we can create this, this profile now in a solid. Now obviously if, uh, it, it, there's some small deviations here because it didn't rotate this perfectly. But we have the outline and it's uh, very accurate. I'm just going to extrude this on two sides. There we go. We hide the mesh body. We now have our profile. And of course you can go into this sketch and if you want to add details or remove details or just make it more um, lightweight and more controlled. So let's repeat this step but now on the other side. So in this case I'm just going to go to the sketch menu, mesh, create mesh se section, select the mesh, then we'll select that plane. We have the uh, other plane registered here. This small, small, small um, offset plane that I, that I created in the beginning. Let's go ahead and do the same. We'll hide these two models. I'll go back into sketch menu, into the mesh, fit curves to mesh selection, and we can now start. Again, I'm going to start with the normal line here. And what you also can do if you want to, and I will show you here in a second, is to take some shortcuts and we can go back in and fix those later. Now we're getting to the more interesting parts. I'm going to start with uh, an arc here again. Or actually, I'm going to go ahead with the spline. So the spline is very easy to work with, but it creates a, 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 a often a very complicated shape. You can use some tolerances here, so I'm going to lower that a little bit. So that helps keeping the, the lines a little bit easier. So with the spline tool, it's, it's super easy to just follow along. But I recommend using the curve and the straight one a little bit more. As they save on data, if you do very complex parts, you don't want to create too complicated shapes, if you can avoid it. And the last part. So for example, in this section, uh, if you watch my scanning video, we had a shadow in this area. Let me show you. We had a shadow that we couldn't really see. But I can kind of figure out that we can continue this line, uh, something like that. And if we now hide this model, we'll also hide the mesh section here. We can now go back in and clean up this mess here. We know that these lines should probably be meet. Um, and we can basically just trim those off. We also know that there should be some sort of radius here. So let's maybe drag this line over. Start with some sort of radius. That's a little bit too much. Maybe something like that. That looks fine. Add the same to that one, and we're good to go. And the same thing over here in the beginning of this line, I told you that I was doing some shortcuts. So basically we can take this in here, create a line, start trimming off whatever we don't want to use. Or actually we do know that we're going in here a little bit. I'm just trying to round this off. Uh, obviously, you don't have to make it as detailed as I'm doing. Something like that, because why not? And trim those off. And then, of course, since we are in the patch environment, we can select all of these lines and extrude them. So we don't have to make a sketch profile. We can only use uh, these lines here to extrude if we would like to. And if we look at everything else now, you can see that we need to extrude on both directions, down into the floor as well. There we go. And we now have a profile matching these lines here. Again, with the rotation, uh, since we are a little bit off, it might not look perfectly when we're looking at the sketch at the same time. Okay, so there you go. There you have the two different profiles. And of course, we can work with these depending on how we want to do it. For example, we can extend this one here. And yeah, it's more or less just to show how it all works. We could create a, um, a floor here as well if we want to, just to have something intersecting. So 
if we hide this mesh now, we have some sort of representation of our wall, but in this case in 3D. So that's how I take out the profiles needed. If you want to check out my video on um, using the patches, I have a video, of course, where I've done that before. So hopefully that helps a lot. If not, let me know what more you want to know down, the, down in the comments. And yeah, make sure you subscribe. There's a lot of you who's not subscribed. While you're down there, click on the like button and let me know what you think about this video. Hopefully it helps a little bit, at least shows how I process data that I scan with the Cat1 or other scanners. So with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.